Now, we talked a lot about evolution already, but one of the last things that I wanted to do is actually address some of the myths that exist about evolution. So you don't go out there uh, believing bad things about evolution just because you don't understand something about it. And so I'm going to go give you some facts that people actually say about evolution, which are not true and are misunderstandings of the uh, theory of evolution or their applications. First of all, Everything is an adaptation produced by natural selection. That's not true. Although natural selection is the major driving force for evolution, on the next chapter we're going to learn that some things can happen without natural selection. And that natural selection is not the only way to create variation and changes within populations and therefore evolution. Some things show up without the process of natural selection. In fact, you have artificial selection, you have bottleneck effects, genetic drift, gene flow. Lots of things can change a population without natural selection being a part of that. Um, and you're going to learn more about that when you do the microevolution lecture series. So, and you do population genetics, basically. So, but remember that. Um, natural selection is not the only thing that drives evolution. Natural selection leads to greater ever complexity. In other words, animals are getting more and more complex over time. That is also not true. Uh, although it may seem that way because we came from a unicellular organism to become everything, the kinds of life that exists today, uh, the complexity of a unicellular organism is very, very advanced. It's more than you can possibly imagine. But clearly, a multicellular organism like a human seems to be more complex than, say, for example, an octopus or an earthworm or something like that. And although that's true, that is, evolution has done that purely accidentally, and it's not because um, it's actually trying to create complexity. In fact, complexity is hard to actually create, and more often than not, evolution creates simplicity. It creates the easiest way to solve the problem, not the hardest way to solve the problem. And so, it's not creating complexity, it's creating simplicity. But if you create a, a, a simple solution for a problem now, there are other problems you can solve, and so you can other simple solutions on top of that. And so what evolution has been doing over time is piling solutions on top of each other. As the animals split the tree of life, you inherit the solutions for the ones that came before you. And that way, you're not just who you are or just what makes you good for the environment, but you're also, in a way, everything, the baggage of what came before you. In other words, we're, we have hands because these things used to be feet in a quadruped animal. And so, we don't have hands because we have needed for tools. We have hands because we used to walk in four legs, or or our forefathers used to walk in four legs. And you see that that means that sometimes evolution drives you to complexity purely accidentally, uh, and because of the pressure that the environment is putting. But it's not actually making better animals, which is another myth about evolution. Evolution doesn't make things better. It just makes things better for the environment that exists at that time. But if the environment changes, what was better before becomes bad later, and vice versa. And so a gene that might be bad right now might be the gene of the future. What if there's a gene that comes by that makes everybody that's above four feet suddenly become uh, very bad and die? That means that anybody who's a dwarf or very short becomes the entirety of the human race. Now, the gene that used to be excluded from many of, of, of the sexual reproductive encounters actually becomes more common in the population and overtakes the other genes. So, changes in the environment, just like the pepper moth, for example, can change the way that the uh, animals actually present themselves in the population. So, there is no batter in the evolution. That's another myth. All right? Um, evolutions are, produces creatures perfectly adapted to their environment. Also not true. The environment is also always changing. So there's never going to be a perfectly adapted species. There's only a species that's better than other species for that environment. But it's not like it's perfect. We're not perfectly adapted to for the Earth. We're just better adapted for the Earth than all the other animals. See what I'm saying? There's a quick nuance there. Uh, evolution always promotes the survival of the species because you hear that whole survival of the species shenanigans and you think okay evolution is all about species surviving on the opposite evolution is about the selection against the weak species so it's actually promoting the destruction of species if they're not tough enough to survive the pressures of the environment another one it doesn't matter if people do or do not understand evolution i do not need to learn about evolution incorrect as well uh, throughout history, evolutionary process has been mistakenly used 
to apply social dogma in society. For example, Nazi mentality was based on eugenics. And eugenics is a, a kind of philosophy that says that we have to become a better human race. And for that to happen, we have to select the best traits and then kill the people who don't have them. And you can see how that equates to what happened during the Holocaust. It was a misinterpretation of evolutionary theory that actually led to that. Remember, there is no better race. In fact, if anything is good for evolution, it's diversity. Because if we're all the same, it increases our chances of being deleted during a mass extinction event or, an, or exposure to a massive environmental pressure. If we're all the same, we all succumb to that pressure. But as, as there's variety within the population, we're more likely to survive. So you see, that misunderstanding of the evolutionary theory led to something very bad happening in society. Misunderstanding of the evolutionary theory can also make you not understand the way biology works because all of animal behaviors and all of animal functions and structures have everything to do with evolution and how it works. Survival of the fittest justifies everyone for themselves. Also not true. The life is full of examples of what we call altruism, where animals actually work together to increase the chances of their survival, and even animals of different species working in symbiotic relationships or mutualistic relationships or uh, commensalism or even parasitism where animals work in close-knit relationships. We even call it co-evolution when two species must have evolved together because they have very strongly knit uh, relationships like for example bees and some flowers. And so evolution is not about everyone for themselves. On the contrary, more often than not, grouping actually leads to greater chances of survival. Evolution is limitlessly creative. That makes you think that somehow variety is being created because uh, evolution itself is creative. Not true. In fact, evolution reuses the same concept over and over again. In fact, because there seems to be better ways to do something. Think about it. Why don't we have wheels to walk? Right? Why don't we have a... Wheels are much more efficient, uh, you would think, to actually go over distances than, than uh, legs would be. But the problem is that the architecture of wheels is hard to do with life. And all our forefathers did not have wheels. So we have legs. That's why wheels did not evolve. But notice how wings evolve for every creature that, that likes to fly instead of jet propulsion. So it's not like evolution is creating this new, uh, it's using the same themes over and over again. So I wouldn't say it's creative, it's actually using the easiest way to solve the problems because life tends to go to parsimoniously. Evolution cannot explain traits such as homosexuality or traits which actually make no sense. Think about it. Homosexuality theoretically makes you less likely to survive, right? Because you're going to have less children because you do not engage in sexual encounters with a member of the, of the species that can actually produce a baby with which means that gene should be deleted from the population over a long period of time and it shouldn't exist. When we do microevolution and population genetics, you will see that traits like that can still be preserved in the population. First of all, nothing says that someone who is homosexual can have a child, first of all. all right? So that gene can be passed on for the next generation and it happens all the time. All right? Society is full of examples. Second of all, if it's a recessive trait, you can pass it on without showing on the heterozygous look. So you see what I'm saying? You can't get rid of that gene because it's going to be in the heterozygous. And we'll talk more about that in population genetics. Creationism provides a more coherent alternative to evolution. That is not true also. Because if you think about it, how do you explain every evidence that, that we discussed in the evidence video without using the theory of evolution? Uh, you can't explain life on earth being created for example lions were not created in the sense of like you know let there be a lion and then there was a lion because lions were not there when the earth started lions developed from prior uh, prior cats so the moment you say you know lions were made at the creation event you automatically contradicting the fossil evidence and all the other evidence that exists now if you want to say something like you know uh, some sort of intelligent design organize the method for the line that is a little more acceptable but it's still just a plug a patch to not accept evolution as a better explanation and in fact uh, I'm not saying that life was not created because that's the origin of life that's a different lecture but I am saying that 
the life that you see today was not created 6,000 years ago because life has changed from 6,000 years ago. And in fact, there wasn't 6,000 years ago that life started. It's more like 4 billion years ago. All right? Some other myths that sometimes cause problems. Evolution must be wrong because the central dogma is right. In other words, uh, what I believe from whatever religious text I'm saying has to be right. And therefore, evolution must be wrong. So what you're saying there is you're mixing up uh, uh, science with religion. Uh, you can't use a religious text to explain science because a religious text, by definition, is not about evidence. It's about belief. So it's you can't do that. Either you accept things without asking for evidence, or you ask for evidence. So in, a, in other ways, in a way, science is the opposite of blind belief. So you can't use that argument, all right? Also, accepting evolution undermines morality. A lot of people say that because if you believe in evolution, then you're going to believe in survival of the fittest. I don't care about anybody else. It's about, you know, the strongest surviving, so I'm going to cut corners and, you know, uh, make sure that my genes get passed on, that kind of stuff. That's a very bad way to, to actually evolve, to make sure your genes get passed on. Because evolution has shown us that as social animals, it's better for humans to work together than actually work by ourselves. And that you actually tend to be selected against if you're that kind of a person. So in fact, morality evolved because of evolution. You know what I'm saying? We think of morality. We believe in morality. Because that evolved. Social behavior, pro-social behavior, things like thou shall not kill, thou shall not have incest, thou shall not, you know, uh, want the wife of another. All of these things is actually behavior that can be explained through evolution. So in fact, evolution sponsors human morality because it's human morality goals which increases our chances of survival as a species and to reproduce successively. Uh, another one that's very, very bad. Evolutionary theory leads to racism and genocide. Yes, misapplication of, of evolutionary theory has led to that. But remember, that's actually a misrepresentation of evolution because diversity is better than uniqueness if you want to have a more sustainable race a uh, stronger race, a stronger species, all right? You're more likely to survive as a species if you have more diversity. So it's actually the opposite. Uh, religion and evolution are incompatible. Not true. Re religion is about morality. It's about making you a better person. Re revolution is about explaining life. Uh, religion gives you the reasons of why. Evolution gives you the how. So they don't need to be against each other. Another one that's big here, uh, that in order for a wing to develop, at some point, the wing was not a full wing. It was only half a wing. And that means that, for example, that's not a, that doesn't make sense because how can half a wing be advantageous? You, you only get the advantage of a wing once you have a full wing. So, right? Wrong. Partial wings may have provided, back in the day, a small advantage to that animal. Otherwise, the full wing would not have evolved for the partial uh, speciation process. That is a misconception, a big misconception. Things don't make big leaps like that. That means that the small leaps did provide an advantage for the animal. And we'll talk more about that when we do speciation. Evolutionary science is not predictive. Wrong. All right. Sci evolutionary science creates hypotheses which can be predicted. For example, you say, I'm going to find this missing link here, and then you find a missing link. All right. Evolution cannot be disproved, so it's not science. Wrong. Plenty of evidence has actually disproved misplaced evolutionary uh, links in the, in, the, in, the, in the taxonomy trees that we have created. So evolution is constantly being modified and improved, the theory of evolution. And we'll talk about that in the next lecture series as well. Uh, there's also a big uh, misconception that there are no transition fossils. To the contrary, there are, museums are filled with intermediate species which show the progress of the evolutionary problem progress. Carbon dating is not accurate and therefore the age of the earth cannot be determined. Carbon dating is only one of the methods used to date the earth. There's a lot of other ways including geological strata measurement, index fossils, uh, radiocarbon dating, yes, but you also have uranium dating and there's a lot of other evidence that comes from other sources, uh, tree rings, climatological evidence, ice cores, uh, um, 
Uh, ocean core sediments, a lot of evidence that has nothing to do with carbon dating. 